Hello all and welcome back. In this video we are going to cover CloudFront High Availability and Failover using Origin Groups. CloudFront distribution can have more than one origin within its configuration and it can reach different origin based on the requested path patterns. CloudFront distribution supports a single origin or an origin group as its source now. Origin groups can be used to specify two origins, a primary and a secondary origin, and a specified failover criteria to configure origin failover for high availability. CloudFront automatically switches to the secondary origin when the primary origin returns specific HTTP status code failure responses. CloudFront routes all incoming requests to the primary origin even when the previous request has failed over to the secondary origin. CloudFront only sends requests to the secondary origin after the request fails to the primary origin. Also, CloudFront fails over to the secondary origin only when the HTTP method of the consumer request is get, head or options. CloudFront does not fail over when the consumer sends a different HTTP method, for example a POST or a PUT. In this demo, we are going to create a CloudFront distribution with an origin group consisting of two S3 buckets acting as primary and secondary. We would then test the CloudFront failover. Let's start by creating two S3 buckets. These would act as origin for our CloudFront distribution. Let's create our primary S3 bucket. Let's name the bucket Jayendra Patel hyphen CloudFront hyphen primary, US East one region, ACLs disabled. We'll block all public access as we are going to access it through CloudFront. Bucket versioning disabled and encryption using AWS S3 managed keys. Let's go ahead and create the bucket. And the primary bucket has been successfully created. Let's create the secondary S3 bucket. Let's name the bucket Jayendra Patil hyphen CloudFront hyphen secondary. US East one region, ACLs disabled, block all public access. Bucket versioning disabled and encryption using S3 managed keys. Let's go ahead and create the secondary bucket as well. And the buckets have been created. Let's navigate to the CloudFront console. We are going to create a CloudFront distribution starting with the primary S3 bucket as the origin. We would then add the secondary origin and create an origin group with the primary and secondary origin and associate it with the CloudFront distribution. Let's create a CloudFront distribution with the newly created primary S3 bucket as the origin. Let's select the primary S3 bucket as the origin domain. We'll keep most of the configuration as defaults. Name as is. For the origin access, you can see the options public, OAC and OAI, which is marked legacy. For this demo, let's just select the OAI, Origin Access Identity. However, note, Origin Access Identity is marked legacy now and AWS recommends you to use Origin Access Control over Origin Access Identity. Let's create the new OAI. Let's name it with failover as we would use the same OAI for the secondary origin as well. Let's create the OAI. The bucket policy needs to be updated to allow the CloudFront principle access to the S3 bucket. Let's have the console update the bucket policy for us. Let's update the viewer protocol policy in the default cache behavior to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. Rest of the defaults are fine. Let's update the cache key and the origin request settings. Let's update the cache policy to disable caching. We don't need any function associations. We do not need WAF. Let's select do not enable security protections. Rest of the settings look good. 
let's go ahead and create our CloudFront distribution. The CloudFront distribution would take some time to be deployed and enabled. Till then, let's create our test files and upload them to the S3 bucket. Let's open the Cloud Shell. We are going to create a primary HTML in both primary and secondary S3 bucket and a secondary HTML file only in the secondary S3 bucket. Let's create the primary HTML file with some basic HTML indicating that it's the primary file from the primary CloudFront origin. Let's copy the primary file to the primary S3 bucket. Let's recreate the primary file with the content indicating secondary origin. Let's go ahead and copy the file to the secondary S3 bucket. And we'll create an additional secondary.html file and upload it to the secondary S3 bucket. Note, this file does not exist in the primary S3 bucket. The CloudFront distribution is deployed and enabled now. Let's test the access of these files from CloudFront. Let's copy the CloudFront distribution domain name. Let's first access the primary HTML file and it works. Note, it has been rendered from the primary S3 bucket. Let's access the secondary HTML file and it does not work as the CloudFront distribution is being configured to point only to the primary S3 bucket and the file does not exist in the primary S3 origin. Let's now create an origin group and let's update the CloudFront distribution behavior to use the origin group. Let's navigate to the CloudFront origins tab. Let's add an origin. Let's select the secondary S3 bucket now as the origin domain. We will use the origin access identity and select the same OAI that we created for the primary S3 bucket. Let's allow the console update the bucket policy to provide CloudFront access to the secondary S3 bucket. Rest of the defaults are fine. Let's go ahead and create the secondary origin. We now have two origins, both primary and secondary within the distribution. Let's go ahead and create the origin group. Let's first select the primary S3 bucket origin and add. Let's select the secondary S3 bucket origin and add. Let's name the origin group as CloudFront origin group demo. You can select the failover criteria with different 4xx and 5xx error codes. Let's select 400, 403 and 404 error codes as our failover criteria and let's create the origin group. Now let's update the CloudFront behavior with the origin group. Let's navigate to the CloudFront behavior tab. Let's edit the default wildcard behavior. You can now select the origin group in the origin and the origin groups drop down. Let's update the cache policy with caching disable policy as well. Let's go ahead and save the settings. The changes are being propagated and would take some time to deploy. The changes have been propagated and the CloudFront distribution is deployed and enabled. Let's go ahead and access our files from the CloudFront distribution domain. Let's test our primary HTML file and it is still being served from the primary domain. Let's access the secondary HTML file. The file is now being rendered from the secondary domain. CloudFront checks the primary origin and receives a 404 and would fetch the file from the secondary domain. Let's move the primary HTML file in the primary S3 bucket to simulate a failure from the primary origin. Let's use the AWS S3 MV command. The file has been renamed and no longer exists in the primary origin. 
Let's now refresh the primary HTML. And as you can see, CloudFront has now rendered the primary HTML file from the secondary domain. And that's it for the CloudFront origin group demo. Origin groups can be used to specify two origins to configure origin failover for high availability. I hope you liked the demo. Thank you all. All right, that was it. Thank you for watching. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For any feedback, please leave a comment down below. To see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.